Seeing the time on the clock, uh, it is now time for member statements. I recognize the member for Windsor Tecumseh. Thank you, Speaker. We lost a dear friend in early October. Mike Ray was a former member here, in fact, a former presiding officer back in the days of the Peterson government. Mike was a lawyer. He taught at the law school and ran legal assistance of Windsor, a free clinic for those most in need of legal services. He served on Windsor City Council for seven years. In fact, as a reporter, I was covering council the night some of his liberal friends came in in the middle of the meeting to tell him Bernie Newman was retiring and they wanted Mike to run for the nomination. He was starting late as a well-connected party insider, had been signing up members, supposedly in support of Bernie, but Mike Ray won the liberal nomination in the election. And back in those days, there was a speaker, a deputy speaker, and a single deputy chair of the Committee of the Whole House. Mike was the deputy chair, and when he stepped down, he was replaced by two people, a first and second chair, and it wasn't until 2004, as you know, that we added the third deputy chair. Speaker, Mike Ray was a gentleman of the old school, always in a suit and tie. After Queen's Park, he ran the regional family responsibility office and served on the board at Windsor's Regional Hospital. He was also appointed a director of the Windsor Port Authority for nine years, and he was on the Windsor Police Services Board and a director at the YQG Windsor International Airport Authority. Speaker, he always put his community first. He was a principled advocate, fought hard for the issues he believed in. I know of no one who didn't respect Mike Ray. He was a mentor and condolence, as Speaker, to Joyce and his family from all of us here in Ontario's provincial parliament. Thank you. Member statements, the member from Mississauga, Aaron Mills. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I hope you bear with me for extra few seconds because I'm talking about a subject which is very dear to my heart. Just last week, Minister of Labour and Skilled Trades announced changes that would make it easier for immigrants to get integrated into Ontario workforce in professions that match their area of expertise. I myself was one of those immigrants, Mr. Speaker. For many months, I had to work night shifts in Tim Horton to make ends meet. I lived that challenge myself. While I managed to get back to my profession, I witnessed countless other immigrants giving up and abundant their profession. I don't want anyone to go through that disappointment. This is a well-known issue that, at least since I landed in Canada, to Canada, 14 years of previous government promises after promises with no real action to change it. Mr. Speaker, these are lost opportunities, not only for the new immigrants and their families, but for Ontario as well. That's why we are proposing this legislation. It is a win-win-win situation. Yes, three wins. It's a win for the immigrants to establish their careers and find employment to integrate into Canadian workforce faster than ever before, it's also a win for employers who are filling the needs for jobs with skilled workers and expand their business. And it's a win for our government as we create a successful environment for new Canadians and grow our economy. Mr. Speaker, we are building a better Ontario for the people. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for University, Rosedale. Thank you, Speaker. Last week, a young woman, Nadia Mosender, was hit by a van as she crossed Danforth Avenue by a driver who was later charged with careless driving. At her funeral, Nadia's father said, I have lost my everything. I want to recognize the lives of people who have died on our roads, including Michael Eskenan, John Offit, and Dahlia Chaco, people who have died on roads in University Rosedale, including Bloor and Avenue. These people didn't have to die. Do you know what happens to people who are charged with breaking a road rule when they kill and injure someone? Very little. They are charged, and then usually when they get to court, they have the option to plea down and walk away with a fine, a few hundred dollars for a life. The vast majority of these people never get to take a driver re-education course, they never have to hear impact statements, and the vast majority of them are never convicted. As legislators, we have a responsibility to ensure tragedies like this never happen again. We can change the rules to make our roads safer. 
to bring in tougher penalties like the vulnerable road users law, to redesign our roads and our sidewalks and our intersections by bringing in a provincial Vision Zero plan, to enforcing speed limits by expanding the use of safety cameras. We cannot bring these people back, but we can stop these tragedies from happening again. So cyclists and seniors and transit users and pedestrians can walk our roads and, and, and streets safely and without fear. It is our job to make that happen here at Queen's Park, and I urge us to do so. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Richmond Hill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise this morning to pay tribute to former Mayor of Richmond Hill, Dave Barrow. He served Richmond Hill since 1978 and also as our Mayor for 15 years. Mayor Barrow, thank you for all you have done for Richmond Hill. Under your leadership, the town of Richmond Hill has widely developed and is recognized as City of Richmond Hill. The cultural plan and strategic plan you developed have laid the foundation for the future growth. I have been living in Richmond Hill for almost 30 years. It is a great place to raise my family and start my business. I'm honored serving with former Mayor Barrow on the Police Services Board when he was the chair. It is the best board I've ever served. We also serve on the Mackenzie Health board where he always sought for the quality of health care for Richmond Hill. He's a role model for me when I served as chair for the Richmond Hill Chamber of Commerce, as he was the board chair, not only once, but twice. Mayor Barrow, thank you for all you have done and all your contributions to the city of Richmond Hill. Thanks. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Thunder Bay, Atacokan. Thank you, Speaker. With winter weather already arriving across much of the north, many of us are turning our attention to winter road safety. In northern Ontario, roads are often the lifeblood of our communities. Highways 11 and 17 are critically important infrastructure. They are often the only way we can get in and out of our cities and towns. People rely on them to get to work, doctor's appointments, go to school, and to ship goods all over our country. However, every year, like clockwork, winter weather brings an increase in accidents and fatalities. Injuries and fatalities are twice more likely to occur on a northern highway than a highway in southern Ontario per capita. Many believe, myself included, that this situation could have been prevented if the province improved winter road conditions in Northern Ontario. My caucus colleagues and I are, are fighting for the North, and we believe that Northerners should have the same safe roads that Southern Ontario residents expect. We believe that pavement on highways 11 and 17 should be bare of snow within eight hours of the end of snowfall. It, it just isn't right that our infrastructure needs don't seem important to this government. Where is the investment and where are the increased safety standards? Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Ottawa South. Thank you very much, Speaker. And October is Islamic Heritage Month here in Ontario. And that was made possible in 2016 by the member from London Fanshawe. It was also co-signed by the member from uh, Scarborough North and uh, Etobicoke North. So it was an initiative that was supported by all three parties in this legislature. And since then, it's given Ontario's many Muslim faith communities a chance to celebrate and to share with all Ontarians their culture and traditions. For the last few years, COVID-19 has made it hard for us to come together in the ways that we're used to. Many faith communities have done a lot to try to overcome that virtually, it's been hard to celebrate, um, celebrate with families. It's been a really challenging time. So I would like to say in particular a word of special thanks this Islamic Heritage Month to the Muslim faith communities in my riding of Ottawa South. The AMA Mosque of Mercy on Hunt Club Road, the Asalam Mosque on Saint Laurent, and the Ali Masjid Mosque on Walkley. Also the Ismaili Community Centre on Conroy Road. 
Thank you for all that you do to build community in Ottawa South, whether it's through opening your doors to the broader community, making sure families in need are supported, that youth have a place to go, or supporting our community's efforts to combat COVID-19. Thank you. Now, as our draws to a close, I think it's all important to acknowledge there's a lot more work to do to fight Islamophobia. And I just want to say to the Muslim communities in Ontario that every member of this legislature stands with you in that battle and will continue to fight with you to ensure that hate has no place here in Ontario. Thank you, Speaker. Member Statements. The member for Oakville North Burlington. Thank you, Speaker. Today is a special day for people of Hellenic descent in Ontario and for Hellenes across the world. Today is Ohi Day. The word Ohi translates from Greek into English as no. It's a simple word, but one with great significance for people of Hellenic descent across the world, so much so that it is actually celebrated annually. The significance of Ohi Day dates back to 1940 and the Second World War. Nazi Germany had been conquering Europe, one country at a time. Their Italian allies attacked Greece, with the Nazis joining their attack soon after. On October 28, 1940, they demanded surrender from Prime Minister Metaxas. Metaxas' response, Ohi, no. The refusal of Greece to submit to fascism is considered by many to be a turning point in the war. Greece's resistance delayed Hitler's attack on Russia, leaving his soldiers fighting in the bitter Russian winter. The pivotal moment in history prompted Winston Churchill to state, hence, we will not say that Greeks fight like heroes, but that heroes fight like Greeks. It's an inspiration to Greeks and to others around the world fighting for freedom and human rights today. Today, we remember the brave men and women in 1940 and people like them in many nations since then who said ohi and who say no to tyranny and oppression. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Hamilton West and Pastor Dundas. Uh, speaker, everyone in Ontario knows that profiteering in long-term care homes is wrong. Everyone in Ontario believes in their hearts that putting profits over the care of our seniors is wrong. Uh, everyone apparently except the Premier because he's now rewarding for-profit care homes, homes with the deadliest records. These corporations are getting very lucrative, multi-million dollar, 30-year contracts. Homes like Orchard Villa, where 78 people died and the Canadian Armed Forces witnessed these horrors. Sienna Homes, 471 people died across the province, while at the same time paying $16 million in dividends to their shareholders and taking more taxpayer dollars to build more beds so they will continue to profit. Uh, in fact, uh, Mr. Speaker, the FAO says $6 billion, taxpayer dollars, will go to private long-term care homes in the province. But the Premier uh, continues to do what he has always done, rewarding his corporate buddies putting the interests of large for-profit corporations first. Speaker, this profiteering has to stop. It's time we put our mothers, our grandmothers, grandfathers, our fathers first. We believe and we insist that this government needs to act now. We need to take the profits out of long-term care homes, protect our seniors first. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Bruce Gray, Owen Sound. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to recognize that October 24th was Brain Cancer Awareness Day. This is something that hits very close to home for me. On May 8, 2015, my son Zach had brain tumor surgery, a day my wife, Michaela, and I will never forget. We are eternally grateful to Dr. McDougall and his team at University Hospital London for their skill, dedication, and care. I also want to thank the Brain Tumor Foundation for all their work on the Hats for Hope campaign to raise awareness of brain cancer in Canada. I encourage everybody to visit hatsforhope.ca to get your tooth and help raise funds to help those who are fighting this deadly disease. Early detection, innovative treatment, more research, and isotopes are vital to defeating brain cancer. I'm very proud to say that four of Bruce Powers' reactors produce cobalt-60, an isotope that is used to treat brain cancer. I commend Bruce Power for their continued commitment to the production of this life-saving isotope, as every day, 27 Canadians are diagnosed with a brain tumor. 
I also want to thank James Skoniak of the Canadian Nuclear Isotope Council for his hard work and leadership to raise awareness of the role isotopes play in helping treat this deadly disease. Mr. Speaker, I will introduce a PMB entitled Champion Ontario Made Medical Isotopes on November 2nd in this House to applaud both OPG, Bruce Power, and McMaster University and the nuclear industry for their continued innovation and leadership around the world and to ensure we remain the leader, remain the leading isotope supplier in the world. It is critically important for us to show our support and let all those who are fighting brain cancer know they are not alone. We're with them, we support them, and we will continue to fight with them. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I understand the government house leader has a point of order he wishes to raise. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, if you seek it, you will find unanimous consent to move a motion without notice respecting the member for Lanark Frontenac Kingston and that the question of the motion be put immediately without debate or amendment. Government House Leader is seeking unanimous consent of the House to move a motion without notice respecting the member for Lanark, Frontenac, Kingston, and the question on the motion be put immediately without debate or amendment. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. I recognize the Government House Leader. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, I move that this House expresses its disapproval of and disassociates itself from a string of disreputable conduct by the member for Lanark, Frontenac, Kingston in the context of the pandemic and COVID-19 vaccines. Most specifically, his use of social media to post photographs and false and hurtful information about identified individuals. And this House calls on the member for Lanark Frontenac Kingston to publicly apologize for this behavior and to desist from further conduct that is inappropriate and unbecoming of a member of the Legislative Assembly of Ontario. Calandra has moved that this House expresses its disapproval of dispense. Is it the pleasure of the House that the motion carry? Carried. Carried. I'm very pleased to inform the House that Paige Sujay Soya from the riding of Oakville, North Burlington, is today's page captain. And we have with us today at Queen's Park his mother, Shuba Nara Simon and his father, Nanda Suryaya Nana Yama. And now, welcome to the Legislative Assembly of Ontario. We're delighted to have you here. I understand the member for Brampton Centre has a point of order. Yes, um, Speaker, I seek unanimous consent for the House to observe a moment of silence for the 39 Ontarians who have succumbed to COVID-19 over the past week. Singh is seeking unanimous consent of the House to observe a moment of silence for the 39 Ontarians who have succumbed to COVID-19 over the past week. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Members will please rise. Thank you very much. Members will take their seats.